Hello. Today we're going to be talking about creating and telling your IP story. Really, it's a no-brainer business tool. And as usual, uh, there's a bunch of points I'd like to make. But first of all, hello and welcome back to Invent Anything. In this episode, we will cover creating and telling the IP story, which is a unique, a unique way to show your company's IP value. And again, it's really a no-brainer because it's something that when you do it, you'll have the opportunity to create enormous value. So in this episode, we will cover six different topics. First topic is, what is an IP story? The second topic is, what types of IP do we actually use in the story? The third topic is tying the IP that you have to the business market technology and inventions. And this is sort of the secret sauce, if you will. How do I actually take my IP and tie it to my technologies and inventions and my products and my market and my business? So your IP becomes relevant. And in topic number four, we're gonna be talking about creating the IP story, different IP stories for different audiences, for an investor versus an M&A uh, versus for licensing. And then talking about in topic number five, how to really use this IP story for business value. It's a now, it could be a new tool in your business uh, box to create value in your business. And in topic number six, uh, what are the other benefits of creating an IP story? Because there's a whole bunch of other things that comes out of this. And then, of course, we'll wrap up. However, let's talk about the audience. For this uh, session today, I think the, the audience would be for those who really want to know about their IP and know how it's relevant to your business. Secondarily, it's for small companies who may be looking to enhance the value of their company via the IP. And this is definitely for you. Well, for our CFOs and CEOs and boards who are always trying to understand the value of the company, this certainly is a way to take the IP and show you the value of the, to the company the IP brings. One of the great places for, for an IP story is with CEOs and investors who are trying to sell the company or raise money for it. But there are all sorts of situations in, in, uh, as an audience, like a fifth audience group, for those who are integrated and in, interested in packaging up their IP in such a way to show value. And finally, as an audience, for those who want to you know, fix up maybe their IP, this is a great way to take a look at your IP story and figure out if it's good enough. And if it isn't, what kind of IP can we create to make the IP story better? Like any story that you can always keep embellishing and, and, and improving by doing some actions. Well, this is John Cronin, Invent Anything. And coming up, surprisingly, there is a way to raise the value of your company quickly and inexpensively. So stay tuned and learn how. Inventions keep the world spinning. From fire in the wheel to today's high tech, inventions power change. Turn your inventions into reality. Learn how to get your ideas to market. This is Invent Anything with John Cronin. Well, let's get started. Topic number one, what is an IP story? So we've talked about six different ways of making money with patents. You can go back to episode six for this. And in each of these cases, there's a separate type of IP story, meaning there's an IP story to maybe license or monetize or sell patents. There's an IP story for selling your company. In essence, it's the same basic story, but it's just cut for a different audience. Most times, and this is 95% of the times, patents are communicated to investors with just a raw list. And that's not much of a story, is it? As a matter of fact, no investor is going to look at it. Uh, maybe a patent attorney on the other side will look at it. I look at hundreds and hundreds of business plans. And it's such a shame that at the end of the business plan, they just list their patents. The third thing here is that patent attorneys who wrote the patents, who might provide some insight to embellish or to improve the storytelling, they're really ill-equipped to communicate this. Uh, to understand the value of patents. Sure, they'll talk about the strength of the claims and prior art issues, but once again, no investor or board or business development folks will understand this. So this calls to attention is there a way to create a story that's really cut for the audience of the people that are trying to assess the value. Fourth issue is with an IP story process, we got started on this about 25 years ago. So we've been always trying to work at ways to help embellish and to improve the relevance of the IP to the person that's looking at the story. And in order to be relevant, we slowly created a process, which today we call the IP story, which we're gonna share some of the techniques here. 
A fifth thing is that although the story has evolved to a process for us that formally links the business to the market, to the product, to the technology, the invention, you have to understand that we've got to come to the point of doing this formally, and so can you. you know, we can show you how you can link basically the business to the market and the market to the product and the product to the technology and the technology to the invention, the invention to the IP. Well, the IP story sort of starts with what you have, you create the story and you see how good it is. In most cases, the first time you do an IP story, it's not compelling enough. So what happens is like any story, like any artist or anybody who's writing a, a story or a paper, you keep working to enhance it. And what that means is you're trying to figure out where to add more intellectual property in the story, that is trade secrets, patents, or publications, et cetera, so that you can continually to improve the story. And it goes beyond that, just idealists and provisionals and trade secrets and things like that can really embellish the story. One of the things about the story as a seventh point here is that the IP story may actually help you adjust the business. So once you develop a story and maybe it's not what you think it should be, you try to embellish it, as you're embellishing it, you maybe make decisions about how to change your business, which is really amazing that you can think about that, that this IP story process could literally change your business. And we've seen that. An IP story also could be used to improve sort of the picture of your business, the IP landscape. So you can kind of understand your competitor or your acquirer. And you can take this IP story and make it such that it fits with the actual data on the landscape. So if you don't have good positions in some places on your landscape, off you go. You can improve your story to do that. Etc. An IP story is improved once, once you have it by looking at what you got and maybe some of the issues are there's a lot of patents in the space that you're worried about. So you can actually invent around your own patents to create more patents or more publications or trade secrets to make your story even better. I've, I've said this a bunch of times in a number of the podcasts that we've talked about, whereby is if you plot the value of an M&A and the y-axis against the number of patents and the x-axis, what you'll find is, and you collect data, like you do some research and find this company was sold for 40 million and had three patents, put that dot on the graph. And this company was sold for 122 million and had you know, 17 patents, whatever, you pop that in there. And you create a line through that scattergram data. You'll find around 15 patents in most industries, the value hockey sticks up. So clearly patents have some way of raising the value of the patent. So there's nothing better in an IP story to make sure you get past a critical number of IPs patents if you can. And for us over time, an IP story has evolved with our clients to become a very effective communication tool for value. And what we have found in a lot of cases is it's raised the value tremendously. Now we don't know what the value of the companies would have been without the story, but on average, you get a one and a half, two X in value for revenues or 10 or 15 X EBITDA. But a lot of the cases we're working on, it's much greater than that, 10, 20, 30 X or more. And it goes to that chart we had talked about that not only the number of patents have gone up, but also how you're telling the story creates the value. So that's kind of what an IP story is. But let's look inside the second topic. What types of IP can we use to tell the IP story? Well, one thing for sure is trade secrets can be used. We talked about that in podcast number 11. It's very important for all companies to understand the trade secrets they have. You can really take the trade secrets you have and document them and put them in the story, but not lose the trade secrets when you do it because it'll be more titles versus specifics. Another thing is, and we've talked about this in several of the podcasts, but by extracting out the inventions of your teams and putting them in a database, maybe you have 100, 200, 300, 400 ideas. Did you know that you can use ideas in your IP story to show value? By doing this invention extraction process, which we highly recommend, you can create a solid list of hundreds of inventions. And you can then use that to populate the story talking about who's ever watching the story or listening to it, that you have a potential of improving your IP position. We talked about enabled publications. That's episode 12, if you want to learn about that. And this really shows advanced strategy IP thinking. What it actually shows is that you know how to place publications to stop others from patenting on top of you. Not only is this just great for your strategy, it's great to communicate that you have a strategy that's sophisticated enough. So when they're listening to your story, not only is it all the right patents in all the right places and all the right trade secrets in all the right places, and there's a volume of them, but you've actually published inventions and got to the point that you know the space enough that you're going to block people from copying you. Wow, that's powerful that your IP story can do that and that you can communicate it. Another great tool in the IP story is provisionals. And we actually have a podcast 23 just released on that. 
uh, what pot, pot provisionals can do, you certainly need to take a look at that podcast because you can use it for so many things, but one great thing you can use it for is the IP story. It's so encouraging to know that you can just take any position quickly and rapidly get the ideas and quickly and rapidly file provisionals. Now you've got official dates on inventions and provisionals don't cost that much. Do you see why it's such a no-brainer? And then finally, we talk about patent applications. And there's a different types of patent applications. They're the ones that are laid open and the ones that are not. And you can force that with the patent office if you want. After 18 months, they're formally laid open by the patent office. But you have patent applications that are laid open. That could be an enormous value to IP story, showing that not only do you have provisionals, but now you have patents. And these are very, very good positional assets. But I do want to say that we've talked a lot about patent applications that are part of an overall family versus different families. It's better to have different families. So a sixth item here is that even though patent applications are extremely useful, nothing beats issued patents and the most valuable assets you can have are issued patents. And what happens is it shows the novelty of your company, right? A patent issued by the patent office means that you're novel by a third party. It's a great part of the story. But there are different kinds of patents and different kinds of trade secrets. We talked about issue patents being very important, but whether it's a trade secret or an enabled publication or provisionals or patent applications or issue patents, these are all valuable assets as long as they're spread across your IP landscape. In other words, some picture of your business. It also should be spread between having inventions to cover what your supplier might be doing, what your competitors might be doing, what your customers might be doing. So you get to see where your inventions might be in future markets and things like that. So we're taking the story and customizing the assets against the business directions. One particular type of patent to have is a trading card patent. But if you ever get in trouble, you have patents that you can use to trade with. You have patents on your competitor, your competitor has patents on you, and you can nullify risk. What a great story to have, to show that you have trading card patents. There's other types of patents that you can use as well. There are blocking patents. These are patents that you use to block competitors. Imagine telling a story about not only your patents across the landscape embellishing the story, but these particular group of patents are gonna block somebody. Boy, the, the story gets to be more sophisticated. There are also patents that are licensable, licensable patents. Here what you're doing is now talking about patents that could be a different revenue stream. Who knows, your revenue stream might be in your current products, but maybe you can point to the fact that your IP story can tell about the future revenues through licensing. So now you're a licensing company as well as a product company. You know, there's a lot of other strategic IP we've talked about over time uh, or developed. And basically this other type of IP can be layered in. It could be other parts of the story that have to do with NDAs or freedom to operate or evidence of use. So why wouldn't you want to leverage your IP? in an IP story to create high value for the company. Why do we settle on lists of patents to put into the business plan? Why don't we tell an effective IP story? Coming up, give it to learn the basics of an IP story. Then you can learn how investors understand an IP story. And now we can learn about how investors wanna do a deal or not and how you can convince investors to do the deal and how you can get into the discussion of improved valuation. So stay tuned. You're listening to Invent Anything with John Cronin. Be sure to visit us at inventanything.net. There's information, articles, and more. And you can leave your thoughts and comments there as well. That's inventanything.net. And now back to John and this episode. So now we're going to talk about topic number three, tying the IP to the business, market, technology, inventions. Okay, now I have to tell you, we've actually created an example here of a meat thermometer for steak. And I think everybody has at one point in their time life maybe used a thermometer uh, to know if the steak is cooked and or maybe you've watched somebody do it. I think we know what a thermometer is about. I had to find some example that I think I communicate to a broader audience and sort of figure out how we could tell an IP story for my patent on the steak thermometer. So here we go. Uh, I think it's gonna work and it'll be kind of fun. So topic number three, tying the IP to the business market, technology, and the inventions. Okay, so first, what do we mean by tying? What we mean by tying is to formally link the IP assets to show how your IP assets equal your inventions. Then we're going to talk about the inventions and how they formally tie to different technologies in your company. Then we're going to take the technologies and formally link them to different product features. 
Then we're gonna take the product features and formally link it to market needs and market benefits and solving market problems. Then we're gonna take those market needs and problems and benefits and we're gonna formally link them to the business drivers of your company. Because in essence, your business is driven by the market you're in and the market you're in is driven by the products that you've got and the products that you've got is really driven by the technologies you can produce and the technologies you produce really about all the creative inventions you have and the inventions by definition of formula linked to your IP. So here we go. So here we are. Let's talk about an invention such as a new sensor. And let's just say the sensor has an array of sensors in it. And maybe it's a sensor for measuring the temperature of steak. And you might have a number of IP assets for this steak temperature sensor. Maybe the patent covers the sensor material you're using. Maybe it covers display uh, on an app where you're looking at the temperature coming out, or maybe it's display on the thermometer. Maybe it covers an algorithm, right, to convert the analog data of the digital sensor, uh, or the analog data to a digital sensor. And maybe there's a sampling rate where you're averaging this. This is kind of important, right? You won't want it to sample every two minutes. You want it to sample pretty quickly. And maybe there's an app that's with the whole thing. So maybe you have some patents and some trade secrets on the algorithm. So you could see what we have as an invention here, right? We have a meat thermometer measuring stick that got some sensors for different materials for the sensors and basically some way to convert it uh, with an algorithm from analog to digital and somehow average the sort of rate at which the data is collected. Maybe that then data goes to a display or an app. So that's where we are. And the IP assets we've created have been made specific to the stake market but you can probably get some continuations in other related markets. So here we go. So I talked about tying the inventions to the technology. And it's important that this may show the company's technology bench strength, the relationships, et cetera. So for our stake sensor, we could have technologies like AI, material development. We have app user interface expertise. We maybe have some other proprietary technology, such as we're working and partnering with the university to develop the sensor array. The technology of the steak sensor is really a platform, isn't it? For all other foods. So it's not just for steak. So when we take our patent assets and related to the technologies, we have a lot of technologies to talk about that supports those inventions. By definition, it has to be. Because if you built this steak sensor, you'd have to have some technology or access to partners that gave you this technology. So wouldn't it be great to actually show the technologies that link to your assets? Now, the technology has to tie to product features. And if you look at the product features, these are really how customer facing product features are really used with the technology and hence the assets of the IP related to that. For instance, for example, the technology can show graphically, maybe the stake temperature, a profile through the stake, and maybe over time, and that's a key feature. Now the partnership with the university and the app interface becomes relevant to the product. So by tying the product features to the technologies, to the relevant IP, we're now talking about how our IP directly connects to our technology and the product features. Now what we need to do is tie the product to the marketing data, which is really key for showing economic value. So if we could show the, sta the stake sensor market, there's a certain amount and it's growing maybe over the years. So we can show the projected market rate. We can then convert the value of our aligned IP to this market growth. So now we have to tie the product to the marketing data, and that's key to creating economic value. So if we can take and do some studies on the st stake sensor market and figure out how it's growing over time with the projected rate, then we can convert the value of the IP that we've linked to the technology and the product to the market. In other words, this IP is covering that dollar amount in market growth. Also, we could also do a market analysis on food sensors in general, because we know that our technology platform can go to other places other than steak. It can measure poultry, it could measure potatoes, et cetera. So now we can make a connection in the market to our platform that shows how our platform can create market share in future other markets. And that's really great. So now we're tying the IP assets to various markets. There of course could be other markets for general sensors since these inventions can be abstracted broadly. Now we have to do, and this is the trick, how do I tie my market to the business? Well, maybe we tie the market to the business, which can be directly done as business drivers. Maybe one of our business drivers is that we want to win in our novel meat sensor stakes. We want to win the stake market with our new stake meter. And we want to fuel the revenues 
of the state of the stake market to other revenues later on down the road to other markets. So maybe there's a second business driver to have revenue sources for licensing in other markets. So not only are we after the stake market, but we're after revenues using the licensing intellectual property in other markets. One of the things here is now overall being able to link the business to the market and the market to the product and the product to the technology and the technology to the inventions and the inventions to the IP. Now we show relevance of the IP, right? Because our stake sensor is now related all the way through to the business drivers of showing how we want to take this, the stake market and build into that, generate some revenues, and then use the IP to go into other markets. So one of the things overall is we could see how, how well our IP story is aligned with our business plan. The details, of course, are how you've mapped the inventions to the IP, which you've probably never done before. If you follow the story, you'll find out that your business plan should be the front end of your IP story, right? Because your business plan should be talking about the business drivers and the market and the products. And the back end of your business plan is talking about your technologies. But now we can take that back end and make it very robust because we're tying the technologies to the invention to IP. For most of the early stage companies we work with, this is the first time they've ever done this. As a matter of fact, you can literally generate your business plan by using the IP story. And the IP story, by the way, is not only just to demonstrate the relevance that ensures your IP assets have, but they also show a business purpose to your IP. And many times they can lead to the sale uh, of the IP assets, especially IP assets that you might not need. Your IP story is certainly going to show that if you have IP that doesn't really tie to the story, then you don't need that IP. Many times we'll work with companies that they have 20, 30 patents and only eight or nine of the patents tied to the IP story, which then leads directly to what are the other 17 patents doing? And it maybe it makes sense to sell them or to get rid of them. One of the things about the IP story is that uh, the linkage of, of telling the IP story can be done in just a few charts and it can be done less than 20 minutes and it, it can be left behind. So your IP story is something that will tell the story even after you leave. Well, let's jump over to topic number four creating the IP story for the audience. Remember I said that it could be different for maybe an investor or a licensee or an acquirer. So the audience is for the IP story, if you think about it, could be number one to inform the IP strategy for the company. It could be executives, uh, maybe the CEOs. It could be for the board. It could be for investors. If you're a public company, the IP story could be for the public offerings. And it could be to tell your, your retail investors about your IP which we've done a number of times. And we've always, we tell the IP story, we've seen a relevant increase in the stock value uh, within weeks to months. And then it could be for acquirers, right? But the IP story could be used to tell your acquirers how valuable your company is. Once again, this is the third time I'm gonna say this. This is such a no-brainer to do. And so important if you're gonna file patents and have trade secrets to know the relevance and the value. And so let's just talk about these things briefly. IP strategy, which is the first thing we talked about. Well, most IP strategies never formally link the IP assets to an IP story, story elements. And basically, IP strategies tend to end up as a high level kind of how many patents we got, what jurisdictions they're filed in, and whether it's an offensive or defensive strategy, or whether it's product centric. But think about that. If your IP strategy is really just a high level offensive or defensive or used for protection, there's so much value you've left on the table by not telling the story to those folks that would like to know the value that aren't related to the whole IP infrastructure. We talked about executives. Well, this is one of the most important areas for the IP story. IP stories can help justify the company's strategic strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It can be used to assess tying the business to the IP for things like budgets, for things like other business uses, like deals or planning. So executives could absolutely use an IP story because right now the executives don't understand the IP. They don't even know where it is. We talked about boards. I've been a member of boards for about 20 years, off and on. I've been in public and private boards. I've chaired boards, both public and private. And I can tell you as a board member, the IP story can help me assess the health of a business and the direction the business is gonna take because it's about the company's assets, right? And the value they can bring. Sometimes an IP story can justify IP budgets. Sometimes there's an event that comes up Maybe there's a quarterly income statement or a balance sheet where we want to justify some of our R&D expense. IP story can do that. 
you know that 80% of most companies value is in intangibles today. And part of those intangibles are a big part of intellectual property. So why not tell the story to the board? Another audience for the IP story is investors. You see, IP stories can lean an investor to do a deal or not do a deal. And if they're gonna do a deal, an IP story we have found can change the whole discussion to valuation, whereby you have the ability now to say your company is more valuable and they have to debate against that. So the IP story can help with that. <clears throat> investors also who don't believe in IP, the IP story won't help them at all. Okay, I get that. But there are many investors that are either worried about risk, worried about being sued. So in your IP story, you can have freedom to operate, which we've talked about before in our podcast, or wanting to hedge on an exit. Certainly an IP story can show them the robust ability for you to have an exit through an acquisition. So your IP story may not directly relate to you know, having an M&A or raise and valuation discussions, but it certainly can show how risk is reduced. I talked about public markets. Pricing and the value of IP to the stock price is one of the things that CEOs would love to do. An IP story certainly helps to do that and justifies it. Acquirers, another, another audience for the IP story, will really help if your IP story is directed towards the acquirer. Now the acquirer will understand how the IP you have plus the new IP you can build is directly related to improving their business. So what this does is improves your ability to get acquired. And many times it helps raise the multiple from two or three X to 15 or 20 X. And we also mentioned acquirers, the IP story can ensure the acquirer can't steal your stuff. If you show your IP is that good and that uh, you know planned out, it's very likely that the acquirer can't just turn around and steal your IP. So coming up, let's see how customized IP stories can be used by CEOs and CFOs, acquirers and investors, suppliers, and even customers. You're listening to Invent Anything with John Cronin. Be sure to visit us at inventanything.net. There's information, articles, and more. And you can leave your thoughts and comments there as well. That's inventanything.net. And now back to John and this episode. So topic number five how to use the IP story for business value. First of all, the IP story is custom, customizable. So you can use it you know, for an acquirer because you're using data about the acquirer uh, and customizing your story for that, or it could be uh, you know, designed for telling the board about the status of the company because you could put things in the IP story that's really much more confidential. One of the things is the IP strategy and the IP can be related here since there's a good linkage between the IP and the IP story, there's a lot of value to show when you want to show that there's a linkage between your IP and your business. It's always great to show that, you know, you're building IP that has to do with your business. A lot of times in the first round of developing IP stories, there's gaps that you need to fill. So that creates a plan to go fill the gaps to make the IP story even better. From a marketing story, a good IP story can be used by marketing to sell the value of the company to customers and potential markets. So you can customize the IP story for marketing folks, and that would help them show the innovativeness of your company. We all have customers. So your IP story certainly can be created for your customers to show major customers how you're delivering products and services and how it's covered by great IP. And what that does is it raises the level of innovativeness to your customers. So if you can show a good IP story, they know how innovative you are but also that you're aware that you understand that you have IP and they should understand that as well because they might not be able to shop the product and services around if you own the IP. Talked about investors so many times, but one of the things with a good IP story, it's critical to investors to understand the company completely, tying the IP all the way through to the business, if done right, should get the higher valuation. Certainly the IP story is customized for acquirers and a good customized story here is critical for acquirers. I mean, sort of think about it. There could be three or four different acquirers and they might wanna buy you for different reasons. So building an IP story that's customized for acquirer one or acquirer two, acquirer three is certainly the way to go. One of the things about acquirers is, and we see so many stories where a large company comes in and literally decides they're not interested in the company. Later on to find three to four years later that that company is doing the technology. Uh, and maybe even violating the patent. So a good IP story is such that it tells the potential acquirer, you know your IP, you know where it's good, you know why it's good. And therefore, a priori, it might have a acquirer think, 
maybe these guys are taking care of their IP. And so maybe we just can't copy it. One of the places an IP store you might find very interesting to use is with suppliers. When suppliers supply things to you, they don't know about your IP. They don't know how you're going to value your IP, whether you're going to enforce it. So an IP story shown to key suppliers will show them that you have aspects of your IP related to your entire business, including your supplier chain. And many times vendors who recognize you're really going to uh, have great IP and support your IP might think twice before they start developing more IP in your space. But Jay, one of the folks that I deal with the most with smaller companies is CFOs. They're always trying to justify why to spend money. So if there's any kind of spend or need for further IP development, an IP story can certainly show the CFO how the value of the company could be improved through further IP development. What a great ROI, right? To help the CFO understand the value of the IP. Because right now they only understand the costs. They understand that they get the bill to pay the patent attorneys or whoever. CEOs, I think, are one of the best people to have a good IP story and to customize it for the CEO because the CEO is in such a great position as the business leader. CEOs are talking internally. CEOs are talking to their boards. CEOs are talking to vendors and suppliers. CEOs talking to the market. CEOs will be talking to the acquirers. I've been a CEO of five different companies, and I can tell you every single time, having a good IP story is so important as to why the company is valuable. So putting a good IP story for the CEO to use they can use it almost every day. One of the things that you might not think about is as an audience is inventors. A good story will actually show the inventors where their IP ties into the business, which might make them better inventors. Think about that. When they're actually kind of developing inventions, they may be thinking about how do I make sure it's relevant to the business and creates more value. A good IP story, finally, we have found many times, it's a great presentation to show to new hires because it's talking about the business, then it's talking about the markets you're in, then it's talking about your key products, then it's talking about the key secret technologies and things you're doing, and then it's talking about the inventions, and that's where they come in, and then you're talking about the IP, the inventions, connection, and they may actually see this company as being very innovative and one they might want to join because they might be able to get patents for themselves. So look at all the customization that can be done. So let's go to topic number six, other benefits of creating the IP story. I mentioned there were many of them. I can only cover maybe half a dozen to a dozen here. First of all, we mentioned that an IP story can be used for IP licensing or IP sales if customized right. Instead of just putting together the patents and list and try to sell them that way, it's so much better to put together a story because the story is going to go to somebody who's going to buy or license the IP. Another use of the IP story is it can be used alongside an IP valuation to show the financial value of the IP in the IP story. We've talked about valuations in other podcasts when we're doing evaluation. A valuation could tell you how the IP is valued and what we think the value is. Add that with an IP story, and it can really give a lot of lift to the valuation. One of the things is, as I mentioned, if you have an IP story and you find patents that you can't put in the story because it doesn't relate to the technologies or inventions of your business, well, this is great because since it doesn't fit the story, maybe this is patents that you want to abandon or sell. Maybe you can use your IP story and that you can be used to figure out what new IP you can create. I can tell you this is one of the most fundamental aspects of doing the IP story, that you see the gaps and you can start filling the gaps to make the IP story better. One of the things you can do is look at your IP landscape and analysis and then come back and figure out where there is gaps, where there are competitors, maybe it's embellishing your IP vis-a-vis -vis the competitors in the right landscape, in the right white spaces. So your IP, is very, IP story is very important to IP strategy. We mentioned that maybe your IP story can be used to inform the selling price of products. Uh, there's studies that have shown that an IP protected product should produce 30 to 40% higher margins than products that are not patent protected. So your IP story can be used in marketing, used for your products, and maybe help you get that added margin. IP stories can be used to link to that income statement or the, or the revenue sources. This is great because every revenue, every income statement has revenue lines and you could literally plot the IP against revenue lines to show how relevant it is to the revenue sources. One of the things with an IP story is you can use to highlight to the CTO or R&D the benefits of using their key technology. So now they see where they fit in to the overall IP story in the business. We've seen IP stories be used to aggregate information that can then be used to fortify getting an R&D tax credit in some countries. So the IP story is used for tax credits. 
And also we can use an IP story to create things like press releases, marketing presentations, and all that other web content. And I mentioned there's so many uses for this IP story. And for the fourth time, it almost appears like a no brainer to use. So let's wrap up. Topic number one, we talked about the IP story. We discussed why 95% of the time companies do, do a terrible job of telling their IP story because it's just a list of patents. And maybe at some point having the patent attorney defend the claims. And nobody outside of the patent attorneys are really gonna understand this. So why don't we communicate the value better? So we talked about having a solid direction for the IP story, which then informs the strategy. In topic number two, we talked about what types of IP do we use in the IP story? Well, there's many types, right? We talked about how to use patents and provisionals and trade secrets, ideas, trading cards, blocking patents, licensing patents, and all the rest. There's a whole menagerie of types of patents to use and types of IP to use in the IP story. These are the building blocks and the Lego blocks and tools of the IP story. In topic number three, we talked about tying the IP to the business, the market, technologies, and invention. Now, I may have oversimplified it by talking about my stake sensor, but we tried to show how that basic technology that we have with the stake sensor, which had maybe some sensors and some algorithms and a user interface, how you could then improve that, right? All the way through the market and the, and, and the value of that market and the value of platforms all the way to the business of how you're developing revenues and how you're gonna grow the business. So I think it's a great little exercise to sort of study because each of you will have your own kind of stake sensor, you're right, with your own assets. It's gonna have your own uh, inventions and technologies and products and markets. In topic number four, we covered creating the IP story for specific audiences. We talked about a basic audience of investors and acquirers. Yep, we talked about CEOs and CFOs and boards and executives. One important note about the story is we recognize that it can really substantially raise the value of the company. And this is one of the best places to, the, to use it. But the IP story has so many uses in the company that just using it for value is one thing, but it can be used for new hires. It can be used for employees. It can be used to just have conversations with the marketing team. In topic number five, we talked about how to use the IP story for business value. Almost like the previous topic, we're actually showing how we can fill the gap here where the IP story is customizable where the first pass may show gaps, but now you can improve it and how we can use it for all sorts of things. And finally, in topic six, we talked about the other benefits of creating the IP story. We discussed all sorts of benefits, like how to know what patents you might want to abandon or sell, how to prepare for sales of your products or licensing packages. How about linking your income statement to the value of, of, of the income statement to the IP? How about leveraging a CTO on how they can make business decisions? improving an IP budget? How can you help the CTO and the R&D guys kind of create a connection between their key technologies and their patents to the business value? There's a lot of benefits to telling the IP story, and these are just a few. So I'll kind of end the fifth time talking about clearly this should be just a no-brainer in creating and telling your IP story. So if you like this, please subscribe and come join our blog and event anything and listen to our new series on Event As It Works.